Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography. So in this session on biogeography, we are going to discuss the soil classification, its various criteria and the various agencies like USDA classification, Indian Council of Agriculture Research classification as well as Marbots classification. So before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and don't forget also to press the bell icon for the updates. And let's learn furthermore. So now let's learn about the classification of soils. Now, there are various organizations or agencies in the world and also scientists who have actually done this classification of soils on the basis of different criteria. So what we are going to learn here is three soil classification. One is USDA, United States Department of Agriculture classification. Then we are going to learn about the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, ICAR classification. And then there is a scientist called Marbut. So we are going to also look at Marbut's soil classification. So now let's go one by one. So the first one is USDA classification of soil, which is at world level. So remember, USDA, that is United States Department of Agriculture and National Cooperative Soil Survey provides us an elaborate classification of soil, right? And it was originally developed by a person called Guy Donnell Smith, who was former director of US Department of Agriculture Soil Survey Investigations, right? So remember the name of Guy Donnell Smith. Now, it's important to first understand that what is the basic criteria behind the classification of soil before actually going into the soil classification and learning it. So, soil properties that can be measured what? Quantitatively. Remember, using the quantitative techniques or statistical techniques are used in this classification system by USDA and they include factors like depth, moisture, temperature, texture, structure, cation exchange capacity, base saturation, clay mineralogy, organic matter content and also the salt content in the soil. So if you observe these are all physical properties of the soil which have been quantitatively used for soil classification by United States Department of Agriculture that is important to remember. So these soil properties are the base for the classification of United States Department of Agriculture soil classification of the world. So, if you want to decode how they have named it, this is the important place now. So, this is a table which shows the prefixes. Now, remember, this is a system based on prefixes. The nomenclature, the naming system is based on prefixes. So, what are the prefixes like? For example, one soil is called NT soul. So, the word ENT here is coming from the last word of recent. So, remember, when we say NT soul, it is basically what? recently formed soil. So it is relatively recent in the terms of formation of soil in geological time scale. That is important to remember. Similarly, if you go to this word incepti soul, the base word or prefix is inceptum or inception that is coming from Latin, right? And which basically means, inception means beginning, right? Then, so the soil basically means is the soil which is now started to form, which is at the beginning stage, right? That's important here. Then what we have is the histosol. The word in Greek coming histos basically means tissues or cells. And remember, histology is one of the branch of biology where we study the study of these cells and tissues that are important. So that is where you can understand that histosols has cells and tissues component, it means it must be part of organic soil. Then we have oxysol. The word oxy itself resembles what is oxide or coming from oxygen containing soil, right? That is coming from the French word oxide. Then we have ultisols. It means the word is ultimus or ultimate. That is the coming from Latin word, right? So it means it is in the last stage or the ultimate stage of its formation. Right? That's important. Then we have vertisol. So the word in Latin is verto. It means it is turning soil or it is layer which has turned or inverted. So that is where vert word comes from invert. Right? That is how the prefix system is important here. Then we have elfisol which basically coming from al that is aluminium and fe that is iron. So the word itself is alfie soul. It means aluminium and iron containing soil, right? That's important. Then we have spodosol. Remember spodosolization? So the word spodos, that is basically meaning wood ash, 
right? So the soil which is having wood ash is important here, especially volcanic origin soils, right? Then we have molly soil, right? So the word is Latin mollus, which basically means soft soil, right? Similarly, we have eridy soil. The word itself is eridus coming from Latin, which means dry region soil, right? So these are various kinds of soil which have been classified on the basis of the physical property that we studied prior to this. And also, these are the names based on this prefix system. So, if you want to learn the system of soil classification of USDA, you must understand these prefixes, their meaning. And if you can decode this meaning, there is no need to memorize it. You can just remember the words, the prefixes, and it will come to your memory automatically that what is actually the meaning of this particular soil or what is the characteristic of this soil. That's the most important point to remember here. Now, Going to the ICAR classification. So, Indian Council of Agriculture Research also classified the soil in India based on USDA classification at first because that was the original classification, right? So, if you observe this table, what do you find here? That the soils in India majorly belong to a category which are recently formed soil. So, we have either incepti soils, the soils whose inception has taken place, that is about 40%, 39.74%. Then we have anti soil, the recently formed soil, remember, these are 28% of the country. And then we have alfi soil, so aluminium and iron containing soil, that is about 13.55% of the country. And then the rest follow like verti souls, aridi souls, alti souls, molly souls, and there is another category that is also almost 2% or 3%, which is mixed of the other components of soil. So remember, ICAR, according to the Indian subcontinent or Indian classification, has these three major categories, which are all kind of new soils, if you observe. Incepti souls, anti souls, alfi souls, verti souls, right? We also have arid area in India, so we have aridy souls as well, right? So this is important according to the ICAR, National Bureau of Soil Survey and Land Use Planning, and that is important to remember. Now, apart from this, there is important classification according to the Indian system in which we study different kinds of soil as well that is given by our own ICAR and that is first one where you see alluvial soil. The word itself is alluvial, alluvium, the material brought by the river and remember India is a land of river. We have Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra as a huge system. Then we have Narmada and Tapi system. So these soils are the silt which are brought by the river and gradually deposited at a place layer after layer and these are supposed to be really highly fertile soil. So that is important. And new alluvium is also called khadar. Old alluvium is also called bangar soil. That is important to remember. Now going by the physical property, its color is light gray to ash gray, right? You can see in this diagram as well. And texture is sandy to silty to loam or what you say is clay. So it varies from sand to silt loam, to clay. That is important. And it is rich in potash and very poor in phosphorus. That is important point to remember here. Apart from that, it supports a variety of agrarian system or agricultural system having these crops like wheat, rice, maize, sugarcane, pulses, oil seed, etc. And these are the major soils in India, if you observe, according to the Indian system of classification of soil. Then comes the next one that is part of the red soil and it is also called omnibus group. Remember, it is one of the groups which is kind of mix of various components. So remember, it is also porous and friable structure and it is mainly seen in low rainfall areas in India, right? So it is deficient in lime, phosphate, manganese, nitrogen, humus and potash, but it is very much important to remember that it has lots of ferric oxide and it is sandy to clay to loamy in its texture and it supports the cultivation of wheat, cotton, pulses, tobacco, oil seeds, potato, etc. So remember, this is also important for agriculture in India. Then comes the black soil or rigor soil, very famously also called the cotton soil because it is very much important for cotton to grow on this soil as it retains lots of moisture. So black soil is characteristic of the Deccan lava plateau of India and remember it has high water retention capacity that is the most important point. So it is again it swells 
And remember the argillic turbation that we studied in the previous lecture. So here argillic turbation that is swelling and becoming sticky and wet and mixing is very much important. If you observe in this particular field, the, all these black soils are represented here, right? And minerally, it is very rich. So it is containing iron, lime, calcium, potassium, aluminium and magnesium as well. But it is also deficient in nitrogen and phosphorus. So additionally, people who do agriculture in black soil region try to put NPK fertilizer. Remember nitrogen, phosphorus and calcium because it is deficient. That's important to remember. And the color of the soil, the name itself suggests it's completely deep black to light black and the texture is completely clay in nature that's important to remember now coming to the laterization process that we studied in the last lecture the laterite soil formation so remember latin word that is later it basically means brick so remember this soil resembling brick formation and remember this is one of the soils which is highly leached soil so high level of leaching means remember high level of alluviation and it happens in the area where you have high temperatures and higher rainfall. That is the most important point. And this soil is rich in iron and aluminium, but highly deficient in nitrogen, potash, potassium, lime, humus. And remember, its color varies from red to yellow. That is important. And because of the iron oxide. So iron oxide is basically the important point where you see this reddish color, right? And then this soil is not completely devoid of agriculture. It actually helps to grow rice, ragi, sugarcane, cashew nuts. So these are the main crops that are happening on this particular laterite soil. Then what we have is the desert soil or aridy soil. Remember the aridy soil according to USDA classification. So it is seen under arid and semi-arid conditions. Obvious reason is that here evapotranspiration is high and rainfall is very less. So what happens? High salt content, alkaline soil. And remember, it is impure calcium carbonate containing soil and nitrogen is also insufficient, phosphate is normal and texture is completely sandy as you can observe the soil here and color is red to brown. That is important. Then we have something called peaty or marshy soil. Remember, peat or marsh soil are always having that anaerobic respiration process or anaerobic conditions because they are completely waterlogged. So this kind of soil is very much also important in areas where you have lots of marshy lands, right? So they are heavy soil with black color and they have large quantity of dead organic matter, humus containing soil and also it is alkaline in nature. That's important here. Then comes the forest soil that is regions of high rainfall where you have forest soil and it is highly acidic in nature if you can observe here and then there is another classification in India because of Himalayan region you have mountain soil right so mountain soil is one of the most immature soils with less horizon development and low humus and acidic condition that is important to remember then after the ICAR or Indian classification we have another important classification something called Marbots classification now what is this Marbots classification so here the soils have been largely grouped into two parts if you observe so one is called a zonal soil and the other is called zonal soil and these azonal and zonal soil are further classified. So azonal soil having lithosols or rigosols that is coming from the rock material, right? Regolith or lith basically means rocks. But where you have zonal soil, it means a soil in a particular region on a particular zone. So that has been classified by Marbot into several part that is pedocles and pedal first. So when we say pedocles, it has intrazonal and the zonal and then pedalfers also are of zonal and intrazonal which are further classified and we have examples so calcimorphic soil halomorphic soil remember calcium containing and salt containing so these are part of intrazonal pedocles and when we have zonal pedocles you have priory that is grassland type soil chernozem chestnut soil gray desert soil red desert soil these are the examples of pedocle zonal soils and then we have something called pedalfers Remember, pedalfers are where you have increasing temperature, pedocles are where you have increasing aridity. So that is important. So here in pedalfers, in this zonal section, we have podosol, right, and latosol. Apart from that, in pedalfer intrazonal, we have hydromorphic soils like bogs, meadows, planosols, and somewhat the pedalfers also are related to the 
tundra type or the permafrost area soils. So this is largely Marburg's classification. Now let's elaborate further more. So on the basis of dominant soil forming factors, what you see is zonal and azonal soil. So soils which are formed in those particular zones. Remember, if you look at this particular map of US, this is where you have the entire area having low rainfall and you have pedocles where calcite accumulation is very famous while in the eastern part if you observe the mid east and all the eastern margin you have pedalfors where you have high rainfall so that is one of the important regions right so pedocles are basically majorly into grassland soil and pedalfor are largely into forest soil that is important to remember and for details you can read on you can pause the video here and you can read the details here of the soil then comes the next one that is azonal soil. The word itself is not forming in that zone. That's why it is azonal. So when it is azonal, what does it mean? It means that it is having the agents of erosion which are bringing the soil from one region to the other, from one zone to the other. It means the soil is not local. It is coming from somewhere, right? So that's important that these are immature soils which are not having well developed soil profiles and for example alluvial soils and loess soils which are brought by water, wind, right? And that's important as azonal soil. Then what we have something called intrazonal. Remember the word is intra. It means within the zone there is a variation as well. So it is part of the same zone but there is some kind of pockets of variation in this given zone. For example, in a particular zone, if there is a change in some local factor, parent material, or maybe some vegetation factor, then you have different pockets of the zonal soil. And for example, if somewhere you have more calcareous soil, it means more limestone containing area. There may be somewhere peaty soil, right? Marshy soil. So being from the same region, but being different. That's where you have intrazonal. So that is between or within the zone, not between. Between means interzonal. That is azonal soil, right? So that's important to remember here. So now, when we have learned in details the various aspects of soil classification around the world and as well as India, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on soil erosion, soil degradation, as well as soil conservation aspects. So stay tuned, stay safe, all the best wishes.